Hey everyone, Sheila again, part two with Jamie at Good Order DC, giving us some info on how to stay organized in your home, whether it's your kitchen pantry, your walk-in closet, linen closet. She is the go-to person here in the DC metro area to help keep you organized and sane. Check it out, thanks. So how much... So how in detail or in depth do you go when it comes to that? In my mind, so I bought this brand new bookshelf, really cool looking bookshelf. And then in my mind, I was like, what if I take off all the book coverings of every book and then put in my own book coverings, either all white or, you know, rainbow color. Yeah. And I was like, God, this sounds a little much. Over the top? Do Do people actually do that? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. There are actually, you can purchase sets of books on Etsy that are not even real books. They are like bindings of classics and you can buy them by color. You can buy, um, that is definitely not too over the top for some people and we respect it. You know, the more, the, the more, you know, uptight you are about things looking great. We are all for it. But the crazy part is Jamie, I was never like this. This just started this like did COVID mind? have any I don't know. I have no idea. It's been, I feel like the last almost year, maybe yeah. two years, I've just wanted things more organized. Like even my own wow. husband's like, wow, your side of the bed is way neater than mine. I'm like, <laughs> no. I know he's like, this is so weird. And then if he leaves his stuff on my side, I'll literally pick it up and throw it on his side and be like, my side's clean. Yeah. That's your side. Don't put your stuff on my side. But I, I was never like this. Like I even did a disc assessment. I don't know if you've ever done a, a disc profile where they, you look, you check your personality. I've so, heard of it. I've not done it. Yeah. So the C portion of the disc are people who are OCD, highly organized accountants, uh, librarians, you know, sure. these type of people who want to know when, how, why, where, who, um, and, you know, the answers to every question before they do anything. And my level for C was maybe like a negative 10, if that was even a possibility. <laughs> maybe it was like a three out of 100. And, and like, you know, the last year and a half, I think it's gone up some. And I'm like, wow, this is very interesting. That is interesting. The only thing I'll say about that is sometimes people will have us do like some really random space. And then to your point, you were saying, once you get organized, you realize how calming it is Mm -hmm. and how effective, you know, it makes your everyday life. It just makes things so much easier when you know where things are, when, when you're organized, you're less likely to overbuy because you can find Mm -hmm. what you have. You can see what you have. You're not just buying just in case. And I think that kind of spirals because, you know, we'll, we'll do one area for a client and they're like, oh my gosh, you have to come back and do my, my (laughs) closet. Like it, you know, it, it, you, you do realize the value that you're adding. It's not just, it's, it's the difference between just cleaning up and organizing. Organizing is actually creating a system that's easy to maintain rather than just, oh, I'm going to just, you know, take the expired food out of here and just leave it looking, you know, like a, like a dumpster fire. So So, it's contagious. Yeah. So then how do you, what do you tell clients, you know, once you are done organizing that space or their house, what do you tell them or what do they need to do to maintain it? Because obviously they just spent all this time, all this money, you know, sometimes that linen closet of ours can look like a hot mess, even though it's been organized, but sure, way it goes. So how do you keep people organize or how can people stay organized after you've gone in and organized them? That is a very good question. Um, And the answer is that our goal is to leave a system that your five-year-old could maintain. Like when we do a pantry, for example, not only are we putting in bins and labeling it so that you know when you're unloading the groceries where a certain item should go, we are also, like we we always talk about zones. We always have things make sense functionally so that all of the snack foods are together, all of the breakfast items are together, all of the dinner prep items are together. So once you get used to it, it is there, it's a no brainer. I, my sister's super messy. Admittedly, she's not 
doesn't care about being organized. Well, she cares about being organized. She doesn't care about organizing. Mm -hmm. And I, on a whim, did her pantry probably five years ago. And it is still to this day, like she'll send me a picture and she'll be like, oh, it's getting out of hand. And then she takes 20 minutes to, you know, remove the packaging, you know, shuffle things around and the breakfast stuff is still all together. The snack food is all still together. So our goal when we leave is that it doesn't take a rocket scientist to maintain it. It's, you know, makes sense for the way that you live and the way that you grocery shop, et cetera. So what about when you have folks who have kids? So, you know, I have a preschooler, but I also have middle schooler and a freshman in high school who they're like the Tasmanian devils Mm -hmm. just go in and and it's a mess. So Mm -hmm. how do you make sure those types of clients are organized or stay organized? Do you actually have conversations with their kids? Like, oh, really? You do? We do. We do. We do. But we also like, I feel like we will have conversations with whoever's hiring us. And generally it's the wife, not always um, about, you know, some people we, we organize to their needs. So if they have kids that are in there helping them, themselves in the pantry, we make it so that, you know, organizing can be a variety of levels of, um, you know, it could be very broad. Uh, we could have bigger bins that just say snacks. We could have, you know, people do micro organize. If you have little kids that are just having free reign of a pantry, we are not micro organizing. So one one bin says peanuts and one bin says almonds, you know, yeah. it says nuts. And if it gets rummaged through, it's easy to fix. So I'm not sure if I'm articulating this well, but we definitely organize to your needs. Mm. Um, you know, if you don't want your kids, you know, eating chocolate and um, cheese it or not cheese it, cheese it's is pretty neutral. Um, I don't know, Doritos, if they don't want them helping themselves to things that are messy or things that are like less healthy, we take that into consideration. We don't put that low. So, um, you know, things still need to be maintained. It's almost like we're a personal trainer and we're getting you into shape but you still need to put the groceries away where they're meant to be. You still need to not shovel in junk food if you want to maintain your weight loss. We just give you the tools to make it easy to maintain if that makes sense. So, you know, if your kids are crazy, your kids are crazy. We can't make them not be crazy. Um, We can, you know, organize in a way that makes the things that they want more accessible so that they're not messing up the whole pantry to get their snacks, if that makes sense. No, that, that totally makes sense. Um, Okay. If I could add one thing, sorry, I have four kids and they range in age from eight to 17 I have three boys and one girl and their personalities are so different. Their ages are very different. So, you know, I'm a real mom who, um, you know, lives in very, my house gets messy and I, you know, I do have to go out, go behind them and nag them. When you have to organize your own or is that 